Hello guys and gals, if is F1 backwards here, back with the another 100% achievement and trophy guide and walkthrough. And we are smashing through the brilliant Call of Cthulhu in this one. It was developed by Cyanide and published by Focus Home Interactive and is available to you for £34.99, which is a bit hefty. Or of course, you could always wait for a sale or when it hopefully comes to Xbox Game Pass. But it is worth the money you part with, in my opinion, anyway. Now the game centers around Detective Pierce who is hired to find out about the mysterious and tragic death of the Hawkins family and acts as a first person horror-ish adventure RPG. Few other fiddly bits before we begin. So first off, we will need two full playthroughs of the game to unlock the four different endings and you can get two different endings in each playthrough. As sadly, there's no manual saving in this game and no chapter select. Which is a pain, but the game is short enough, especially when you know what you're doing after the first time through. Secondly, I'm skipping through all the cutscenes and all the dialogue options just to save time on the video a little bit. But it's definitely worth watching and listening as the story is actually a really good one. Plus, the loading times are a bit of a joke, unfortunately, in this game again. So I've cut them down as well to save a bit more time. <sighs> Thirdly, there are skill checks in the game which can be a slight problem only really in chapter 2. But beyond that, your skill point should be high enough but I'll get more into that in just a little bit as we um, progress on to chapter 2. Uh, lastly, it is pretty important that you follow absolutely everything I do in this video as there are a lot of collectibles and little things we need to do for achievements later on. So I'll try and talk and guide you through everything that we do then. But again, vital that you follow what I do. Whew. Right, thank God for that. So now that's everything then, we can finally begin. And here we are then, we start off in a sort of tutorial level more or less. But it's just showing you sort of what to do and how to do it. So, it'll be the normal sort of... Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the buttons and controls are easy enough. You just um, press the left direct directional stick, the dick sectional stick to walk forward. Go ahead, press B to crouch, and then go under this beam here. And then what we'll need, um, you'll see that option a few times. Um, we'll need a bit of light to see certain things, uh, which later in the game you'll be pressing with the Y button, and you, you'll always have like a little lighter with you anyway. So grab the bolts, cut this gate open. And this... I say this is like a tutorial level, we'll actually be coming back to this area a little bit later on in the game. But like I said, it's, it's not too bad, you know, I enjoyed this game, I know a lot of people have too, but um, to be honest for me, it didn't, it felt, didn't feel Cthulhu-y enough, if that's even a word. You know, there's not as many jump scares and horror elements as I'd have personally liked, but then again, everyone's different in that respect, so you'll see what I mean. So then, now we are on to chapter one. And this again is a real short chapter. Just do everything I do in this video here. So go ahead, turn the radio off first. And then what we'll need to do is have a look through um, a couple of filing cabinets. Again, good old story of blackmail in a speakeasy. Like I said, they might not seem that important, but they actually yeah, are, because it's one of those games that's sort of like a tell sort of like a telltale series games where the things you choose, the actions you do, have an impact on different uh, choices and things later on in the game. So just pick up that book by the typewriter there. That is I mean that's important enough. It's like a diary which you'll need anyway. Make sure to not drink. There is a drink on your desk. Just make sure to not drink at all throughout the entire game. There's only about three or four options uh, that you'll need to drink through the game. <sighs> and this is your skill points then. So what we'll need to be doing first is every um, uh, new point you get, just smash it all into spot hidden. That will become very important very early on. So spot hidden first and then strength after and the rest you can just dish out equally if you want. And that is where our first achievement will be. Whoa. Man, I'm getting too fat for all this. <laughs> or oh, too out of breath. Anyway, so I think that's pretty much everything covered. Like I said, I'm just smashing through the dialogue. It's, it's definitely worth listening. It's a very good story, in my opinion. But hopefully, I'm not. I'm 
I won't be going as quick through the game. I try to sort of slow things down so you know what I'm doing. It's only really, I only tend to just blast through the dialogue. So have a look at the things on the desk there, paper clippings, turn around, and then have a look at the art. This should unlock you your second achievement of the game very quickly. What do you make? And you can just pick the, um, learn about the Warehouse 36 option here. None of the op none of the other options matter. Again, there's a couple of points, you can just leave this option now. You can have a blast through, it doesn't matter. Obviously, I'll explain if certain dialogue options matter a little bit later on, which they will do sort of towards more the end of the game. But for now, it should be fine. But uh, like I said, I'll, I'll pipe up with my beautiful something Welsh important. accent <laughs> whenever yeah, something important's coming up. Dark so then, just a couple of things to do before we leave. Pick up the blue bottle there on the books. Very important again, that's for an achievement later on. We'll be grabbing all the sleeping pills. Turn around, there's a medicine book on the chair there, so grab that. And now I'm pretty sure that is everything. So you see in the bottom left-hand corner there, medicine. And you'll also see another one for occult items, which we will need for another achievement later on. And as you see there, it's very important to get sort of all your, all your numbers up. Um, just for little dialogue options and things later on. Oh, wow. So that one is done. Then that's the first chapter done. You'll get another achievement right here. And that's for going to help the Hawkins family. So, what? so then on to chapter 2 and this is another area that will be quite a prominent feature throughout the game. We'll be uh, revisiting this area a few times. So just uh, enjoy the dialogue for now because for some reason you can't... Th for some reason there's some you can skip and some you can't. So just enjoy it. A uh, nice young woman and a great painter. What a tragedy. You know what? Go have a drink of the Stranded Whale. What you need is a good pick-me-up. Mitchell may not be very... As for me, you'll find me at the Harbor Master's office. If it's the Hawkins family that... Uh so once you've finished your little chat with Fitzroy, go ahead straight to the right, and we're going straight up to the Harbor Master's office. And you can just go straight in there. Uh, we will actually have to wait for him to uh, come around. F a few things to collect in here in just a little bit. But for now, you know, have a look around and see how dingy and sexy it is. Although it is 1924, I suppose, so it's not going to be all uh, HD TVs and ultra HD 4K porn on your phone. Um, <laughs> I didn't even mean porn, so just ignore that. Yeah, let's move on. So now we can talk to Fitzroy. Sorry, I'm already losing my head, dear. But in truth, you're likely. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around, though. When you're done, come join me on the deck. Right, go and look at those manifests on the left-hand table. Charles Hawkins. That's all I'll get from them. For the first bit, then we can nip into the next room, and there should be a book on the table right there. That is the second medicine one, but the only table in the room you'll see. That's another point into your medicine. Now we can go up the stairs directly behind you. And towards the end of the room, have a look in the left-hand side. This man. Uh, desk drawer for a photograph of Fitzroy. And that's all there is. Again, there's other items to sort of have a look in. But, you know, these are only the important ones. So you might as well just follow what I do, really. Uh, go to the left I wonder what uh, uh, side drawer again there on the desk to get another threatening letter just before you leave. And then talk to Fitzroy again. And again, the dialogue options don't really matter here, so you can either copy mine or just choose what you want. I know that Charles Hawkins was descended from a family of ship owners, and the island's fishing industry was hit badly. Indeed, we specialized in whaling. So we're with. I'm looking. For Look, it's right there. 
The warehouse is opposite the jetty. You can't miss it. Understood. You know. It belonged to the Hawkins family. I, I shall be on my way. So come back. So all we were doing is just trying to get the information about where the warehouse is. So now we can go into the uh, Stranded Whale pub. And a little cutscene will play, which you can just skip through. Again with the barman, make sure to not order a drink first. But I just, I just play it safe. I can't be asked to do any fighting and stuff, so I just, I just apologise and just move on. That'll be all for now. So directly from this point, then turn right around, and you see on the wall a sort of. Uh, newspaper clipping or whatever that is in a frame so make sure to click on that for some information and now this next bit is very very important I've we need to lock pick a, a door basically and it's important to do it if you don't do it you'll ha you'll be missing out on a few things plus another couple of achievements so basically I've shown you a failed one here so, once he goes to do it, as soon as you see him struggling, as soon as you see it tensing, like, just there, that bit of tense there, make sure to just exit to the main menu and try again. Otherwise, it'll save and you'll have to restart the game and it'll be annoying. So, this is what a successful pick lock will look like. And you'll hear that little noise then. And there. that should be, and as you can see, it saves automatically after so if you do fail my suggestion would be to just completely start the game again get to this point and as i said that little bit of t as soon as you see that little bit of tensity just quit quit out and try again and you'll end up just in the bar in the last place so press y to turn on the lighter when you get into this bit there's a your first hidden item here the scribble note Somebody's just stupid. between a barrel like a and a um, another box Hello. and then go and pick up a bottle of booze from the back and then what we can do with that then uh, we'll be getting an achievement just a little bit later on so go to the right go down to this statue and just interact with it by pressing the a button Well, holding the A button. Patron saint of sailors and travelers. Desecrated. I can't even... And now we can go ahead and head back. Like I said, there's all these tiny little things you'll need to be doing, but which will help in a big way. So go ahead. Here's a couple of piss heads right here. This just looks no different to my hometown, to be honest. Filth everywhere, and everyone's piss head, and then you got these two bouncer-looking mother... F anyway, go up to the bouncer-looking mother... F and this is very important. Choose the dialogue options I do on this one. I got to enter the hawk... No, it's very... I don't give a damn... No, we don't give a... I bid you... Then just leave. If you blame them for anything that you're doing, basically it'll mess up this next achievement. So now... Go ahead and go to the two piss heads right here. Follow the same dialogue that I do. Uh, what we'll need to be doing is getting these guys to distract the guards and, of course, unlock another achievement. The two guys behind you. They're more. I have an offer that well, I need you to keep them. You send what's in it? What would convince you? There's only one for sure. Look what I've got. You're a good guy, you. Right then, and there we go then, so now they will distract the guards, unlock us the achievement, and drop them. We don't actually need to go past the guards there, because we're going to find another way into the warehouse, so that is fine. Oh, yeah. Now, go back towards the Strand Whale, go back, and then just go to the left, sorry. So like I said, we will be going into the warehouse a different way. Uh, we'll need to pick up a few items in the warehouse before we can try and open the grate There is a grate right there in the center of the room We need to try and open and this is another important part So just to the left then of the entrance we'll find a lever so go ahead pick that one up first 
It must come from these old ones. Turn around and to the right of the room, just behind these metal um, sort of things, there is a cog. Rusty. Turn right around, and then in a trolley over the grate will be your final piece. Now we need to put all these onto a mechanism, and we will be trying to open up that grate. This ratchet device now, this is another part. Remember the lockpick uh, attempt from earlier on? Um, this is another uh, important bit. Sadly, if you fail and the game saves, it's unfortunately, it's definitely worth... Uh, ooh, apparently, I can't... Uh, get over a ladder there, so I'm real good at that. But yeah, if you do fail this next bit, sadly, you might as well just start again because we'll be missing an achievement and something better for later on as well. So it's quite imperative that you uh, succeed on this bit. The first two times I played through the game, it went through absolutely lovely, and then the third time I failed. And this is the failed attempt. Like and you will see. All that's left. Again, just like the lockpick, there's a little bit of tense in motion, so as soon as he starts to tense here, that is when you should uh, try and restart yeah. the game. Broke. Again, sadly, if you do miss it, though, you're going to have to restart. Uh, again, it only takes about 10 to 15 minutes to get to this point, so it's not too bad. But still, pain in the ass if you miss that one. So we'll go back through it again then, just re it. So this, this is... The successful one. Reattach everything. Turn the handle. Looks like everything is in its place. All I have to do is... And that should happen. So it should... You'll have no tents. That noise, that... You remember that successful little um, noise from earlier on? Yeah, that should happen. So, hopefully, anyway, you've got the, uh, the pick lock in down, you've got this bit down, and now we can go ahead and climb down the ladder. Turn around, and just to the right, there's a little sort of doorway, and we'll be heading directly into the water here. For your first hallucination of the game, because, you know, dealing with cthulhu -y stuff, it, it, it'll make you go mad. It will make you go mad. Slip through the water, and you're going to shit yourself. Uh, not you personally, but unless you jump scared that easy, of course. So there we have it then, another achievement unlocked. So if you had failed trying to open that grate earlier on, this is an achievement you would have missed out on and would have had to have done it again. So as soon as you're out of the water, then click on the mural this right is, there for your first bit of occultalism itemness. And there should be one just to the, no, there's not, sorry, that's a ladder. I thought, I thought there was another one, that's a little bit later on. Now, climb up this ladder, and this is where we enter the warehouse. Now, as I was saying earlier on then, with the picklock attempt and the opening of the great attempt, they are the only real hardest two skill tests you'll come across. Simply because as the game goes on, you'll be putting your skill points into those particular skills, thereby making it a lot easier. So, this is our first reconstruction scene as well, so now we can go ahead Go ahead, press the LT and RT buttons together, and just click on everything that has a little white dot on it there, including the medicine bottles. There's one important one as well for an achievement later on, the sleeping pills. Go ahead, grab that. So either just follow me, or just have a go around, have a look at the room, and just click on all the interaction item buttons. King them since the time of can't sleep. I know how that feels. It smells as bad as it looks. Is this one of Sarah Hawkins? What is this picture of Charles and Sarah Hawkins doing here? So once you feel you've done enough or everything is complete, just hold LT and RT again to exit out of that. And now what we can basically do is escape, and it's now the end of chapter two, actually. We've got nothing else to do. You'll have a bit of dialogue with 
Officer Bradley and again with Officer Bradley here make sure to follow the same dialogue options that I do we'll basically be needing to team up with him so it should be available straight away there it is let's team up you should have that psychology answer unlocked and he will agree and then you can nip on to chapter three let me can you explain what this painting is doing here this strange point. It was in the Hawkins man. So you confirm that it I'd like to go and see the man. Of course. <sighs> Come on. Andrews, would you please shut the door? And open your eyes, damn it. This guy went right under your nose. God damn it. Her again. Officer Brat what? Come on. Oh. Who the Is it far? This mansion. Look behind you, at the top of the ridge. You see the building? That's the Hawkins mansion. Come on, we got some driving to do. So here we are then, already on to chapter 3. And this bit, once again with Officer Bradley, we will need to accept his offer to let him come with you, so make sure to do that. Night falls quickly. I'll go with you. Why not? You're right. Let's go. I know Bradley walked like he's pooped himself, but you know, you can just ignore that. So uh, go forward, go to the right here, then we'll need to be picking up an item just on the ground later on, down the steps, and head towards the sort of table at the end. And on the ground, you should see like a little whale, all wooden and stuff. That's the only thing we need to do in this area, so turn directly around, go back the way you came, so up the small few steps, through this little gateway archway thing, and directly across into the other one. We'll be nipping off into the graveyard now. But just before we do that, see this big old statue here? Yep, yeah, give that a little interaction, press and hold A. 1693. This house is much older than it seems. And now we can go to where Officer Bradley is right there, looking all poopy and stuff. Um, no, I gotta stop with them. Okay. Terrible, terrible jokes. So there's three graveyards um, okay. right here. What you'll need to do then, just keep interacting with them until you keep saying the same dialogue. Uh, there's like, maybe there's two or three sort of dialogue options that he'll say, so just keep on going until you've exhausted all the options. Why were they. Let's go to the man. Please give me a minute. Charles Hawkins Gray. Charles Hawkins. There you go. So he says the next, uh, same dialogue. So nip over to the next one and do the exact same thing. The caretaker. The caretaker takes great care of these graves. Again, if you want to be on the safe side, just press each gravestone and you know four or five times that should be more than plenty enough then so what you need to do now exit go to the left this time and up these steps and instead of turning left because you can't get into the front door anyway that's where you think you normally go just keep going straight and you'll have a bit of dialogue options with the caretaker now and you do get time but all you've got to do then is mention sarah's father then mention Sarah Hawkins herself, or, you know, just follow the exact same thing I do on screen here. That will unlock you the Terrible Old Man achievement. Sarah Hawkins' father. Webster, huh? I understand. But me? Why would you not? I've got a no- The police report. Webster. He wants to- The mansion. That's why- That's right. And this door? It's locked. The sooner I carry out my in after which, huh, I love but I have a better idea. Silas, Pierce, Officer Bradley, this do something, Bradley. 
I vouch for him, Silas. We have reason to believe that someone and Impossible. Better safe than sorry. Now <clears throat> Okay then. I'll... Let's see what more I can learn from this mansion. There we have it then, old poopy pants comes over, saves the day, saves my skin from being axed to death, and <laughs> now we can move on into the Hawkins mansion. Let's take a look inside. And I don't know why I keep calling off the Bradley poopy pants, but I, I don't know, it's just real crap humour I'm afraid. Um, anyway, so yeah, again the loading screen here will take a while, like they all do in this game, sadly. Follow me. And before we begin with this little bit then, um, now just go ahead, press the select button, whatever it is, I call it the select button still. Now we can upgrade our spot hidden right into the almost maximum then. Like I said, anytime you get any uh, CP, any points, just make sure to just smash everything into spot hidden first, like I said earlier. And then investigation. They are the two most important ones on this. And now we are entering the sort of, yeah, this is where the Hawkins had their last dinner. And what the hell is that kind of meat? That ain't no turkey I've ever seen, lad. <laughs> um, so, RT and LT. Reconstruction again, and there's only a couple of points you'll have to get. The meat in the middle of the table, a plate near the fireplace, another smash plate, and the plate on the table. Again, just follow the video. Head of the family, Charles Hawkins. The boy was probably here. Smashed his plate on the floor. Sarah Hawkins' plate. Why did she leave it untouched? Something happened at this table. An argument? Again, hold LT and RT to leave the reconstruction and we'll be doing quite a lot of these throughout the game. They're Easy enough. There's nothing that's really too challenging about them at all. So there's nothing to worry about there um, Move on then go into the next double Doored room and we need to be doing another reconstruction here Again quite a few little things we need to get but follow the video to see what you've exactly got to press Child's corpse left a trace Where are the others? Did it stop at the time of the fire? They had a fight. Why? Did Sarah Hawkins lose one of her shoes? How? Was Charles Hawkins a heavy drinker? If the painting I found on the docks really came from here, how come it didn't burn? Did someone escape the fire? So oh, hopefully then you got through that quite painless. It's, yeah, like I said, they're never too challenging. And pick any dialogue options you want here. They're not going to make too much of a difference at all. I suspect a crime. You sure of that? There's only one way to be sure. And he's done yammering on then. Go to these sort of uh, piles of wood right here. And you'll be able to move them. And move forward through the old door here. And we're entering another part of the mansion. And we're actually coming up to the sort of main part now. So we've got a couple of uh, CP points that we can put in to our last spot hidden and now that is at 100 percent and like i said investigation will be the next main one the two sort of main skill sets you'll be needing throughout the majority of the game i just ask that you don't disturb anything so just follow the path i take then picking up the same items that i do on the way for instance this medicine book which boosts your medicine points up a little bit and uh yeah just grab anything that i do here These bandages are covered in dried blood. But whose? 
open towards where the front door is. And as you see in the left-hand corner, we've got another uh, little hidden object to find here. And it's just a crowbar literally in between two uh, well, the tables and chairs. I couldn't even get my bloody words out then. So when we're done with that then, go ahead and follow Bradley. You can't go upstairs yet anyway. Um, read this book on the right. Again, every little thing you interact with, again, that'll come with an achievement a bit later on. So this is the main foyer of the Hawkins Mansion. We'll be coming here once or twice a bit later on again. So again, this little area, there's nothing too specific you need to grab. Just interact with things along the way. And now we can start heading up the stairs. Sarah have done to make this person threaten to call the police. I wonder if you'll notice the jump scare there. I do actually wonder if you just noticed that. I, I think it was the uh, just the Cthulhu. Um, but anyway, go to the second door on the right. You can't go through the first door anyway. We are now in the little boy's bedroom. And just... We're doing another reconstruction scene, so... Press and hold LT and RT, interact with the items that I do, and you will unlock another achievement. Tom Sawyer. Mark, Sarah must have read. Sleeping pills. Strong for an... What was wrong? What nightmarish vision could have inspired them? Simon's troubles went beyond family problems. That kid saw something. Something terrified him. And then that one is done. So now, we, of course, we can head out. And before you leave, make sure to grab the book, which is on the left-hand side of the bed right there. That's very important. And hopefully you've been picking up and grabbing exactly what I have been doing throughout the entire game so far. If so, then you're on course to get the majority of the achievements in this one. Anyway, exit the room then and just turn the corner, get your lighter on and you see an office key we can pick up right here. And now we can just nip into the door straight next to it. This is Sarah and Charles, the parents' bedroom. I'm got a couple of things again that we need to find in here. So turn directly to the right, and just between the wardrobe and the sort of uh, setty thing is a sketch pad, and that is an oculatism item progression. Ocul oculatism? Ocul occultist? Oh, whatever you want to call it here. <laughs> anyway, go behind the uh, shades, whatever they're called. I, I don't know. Americans know. To find another prescription. I don't think there's many of them in Britain. So go around the corner, find uh, in the desk you'll find some um, pills of some kind. Now we can exit, that's all we needed from there. And now we can open up the locked door which is just opposite the, the little kid's bedroom. And this is what you'll find. Ah, just a little ritual demon circle then. Nothing out of the ordinary here, apparently. <laughs> so just go ahead then and click on that. Again, we'll be looking for a few items in this room again. Directly in front of you on the table is a letter. And if you just turn to the left, in the middle of this desk right here, you can open up the right and the left ones, but there's nothing in them. This is what you'll find, is the sales ledger. That's also what we'll need. It seems the last one was given for free to a France. And then in a filing cabinet, which is actually behind me. That's not a filing cabinet. I'll try that one again. Uh, it's on the bottom. There we go. We managed to get there in the end. We've got an agent's letter. Seems she wasn't giving any signs of life. So that's all the items we need collected in this room. So now we can leave, turn 
directly to the left, go up the stairs and have a look inside the art room. And now we will be chasing a thief again. We're just smashing through all the cutscenes and dialogue, just saving a little bit of time. So you can't actually see the thief. Man, my words are getting jumbled up. You can't actually see the thief. But again, just follow exactly where I go. You, you, he's gone. He's long gone anyway. So you'll just end up with Officer Poopy Pants right here. That was actually probably the worst uh, chase scene in gaming history right there. Sorry, Call of Cthulhu. A great game, but that chase scene could have been better. Anyway, down the corridor, this door right in front of us was actually locked before. If, if you couldn't tell, but now it's open anyway. So now we can explore. We're almost at the end of chapter three. So directly on the left on the table. Guess, get yourself some Celtic ruins there for another bit of oculatism progression. Directly beneath this that, then, between Fuller. the table and chair, is a letter Sarah from Dr. Fuller. Fuller. We'll be meeting him a little bit later on. In around two chapters' time, actually. Look at the like map on the seat. desk, the old sea map. Again, like I said, you can explore and smash everything out in the room if you want to, but these are just the main important bits for the story and for achievements later on. So there's a captain's picture of Hawking. Uh, Fitzroy the the on the table, and then directly behind you on the settee is another letter, like this came from a or a sailor's logbook, even. Now then, to finish the chapter, there's a small tiny puzzle you've got to do, and obviously, with it being this type of game, you'd have to explore the room and figure out exactly what to do, but, you know, we'll just smash through. Click on the globe straight away, I'll tell you exactly where to go, you know, that saves a lot of time. And then directly to the right of it, as you see, there's the little sort of compass uh, looking thing on the globe. Northwest, east and south. Click directly like on the middle of that and this should automatically happen. Bookcase opens and open that and we well should done, be good please. to go. So it's not too difficult at all then. There's only one sort of compass area on the map. And it's just a little bit to the right of where you start. So easy peasy lemon. El Cheesy. So now we're on to chapter 4, we've only got 10 chapters left to do already then, and this is one of the, sh uh, quite one of the shorter ones. So before going straight ahead then, we need to do a reconstruction scene with the table on the left. And again, just follow exactly what I do here, copy what I do, and you'll get through this with no issues. What is this mask supposed to represent? Did Charles Hawkins hide something in this chest? This piece of cloth is unmistakably from a dress. Sarah Hawkins. So the guide I was using actually failed to mention you've got to click on this guy for the final one. I was walking around for freaking ages trying to figure it out. And it was just this guy, so didn't I feel like a bit of a dick? Yes, I did. But that should be that then. Reconstruction over, LT and RT to get out. And before we leave again, see the box at the back of the room right there? Go ahead and open that one up. Sometimes it fails, it doesn't matter if you do fail. Every time that I've done it, every, three playthroughs I did, and they all worked. So, but if it doesn't work, it, it doesn't matter. Literally, it only has an effect on the Oculatist, Oculatist achievement a bit later on, but there's plenty of objects to pick up for that anyway, so don't stress too much. So now we can continue forward. There's only one real path to go down at the minute, and you'll have a bit of dialogue with Officer Poopy Pants right here. Of like, course. Where the hell have I got that from? Once again, guys and gals, thanks for sticking around because I talk some other... <clears throat> I don't even know. Other crap sometimes. So, anyway, just continue forward. 
Um, I haven't lost my mind, honest. Promise. I I am sane. Honest to God, I am. <laughs> Go through the uh, murky and dirty waters, and there will be just a little, little bit of a thing on the left. There it is. A little bit of a gap and opening. Just in case you don't know where you are, then it's literally directly straight in front of you from when you get down these steps. And once we squeeze our way past here, we can then continue on forward. And before anything, go straight ahead. There's a skeleton there. Make sure to pick up the item directly next to it, the Diary of the Pastor's Wife. We'll be picking up a few of these for an achievement again later on. You can exactly. click on the skull, doesn't really do anything, uh, but right in front of the, in right, well, right in front of you is a mural. Keep going to the right, because there's a few murals we need to click on. There's the second one. Just keep hugging the right-hand wall, and you'll have no problem. We're not missing these. Are they dead? Are they asleep? Oh, uh, yeah, they're just taking a nap. P.S. It's cool. It's cool. And I think there should be one more. This is the one. These buildings seem to have come out of the water. And then he should be good to go. There is literally nothing else. It's just sort of handprints and other designs, etc. So now, again, we can continue on forward. Jump down. That's good, you gain one <laughs> you gain one skill point for jumping down. Wouldn't that make life so much easier if we could do that in real life? Time has weakened these structures. Yeah. Again, you can't really get lost here. And if you do, congratulations, you're gonna have to stop playing the game. What's going on here? Piers! Keep your voice down. We'll... And so then, once we get to this little area here, before you interact with the painting on the end there, just turn to the right. And there should be another occult item right there for you to pick up. Engraved whalebone. A strange creature has been You can go and have a look on the left side, but there is literally nothing there. So now well, there's something to interact with, but nothing to actually pick up and enjoy. So you can just go ahead, click on the painting of yourself. That is one sexy dude. If I look like that, which I don't, so all is good. And now we're back in a quite familiar area. Remember at the very, very beginning of the game? This is where we ended up. Oh, again. And I did say we're going to end up back here. Sadly though, you can't go straight through the gate. You've got to get out of here quick. So there's a path to the right you need to take. Because uh, PS is getting a little... Uh, oh, well, his sanity levels are dropping a little bit. So we need to get the hell out of there. Which we do. Squeeze through the gap. And then it's job done. Is it... Is it my turn? Yes. It is time. You will soon be one of us. If your body and mind are ready. I dream of it every night. I have constant visions. I am ready. Good enough. Prove it to us. It's like in my dream. So as these three dudes wander off then, before you go ahead and follow them, turn directly to the left to find another occult item, which is a ritual recent. dagger. Probably some and then from this point, turn directly behind you onto the other side of the bench to find another occult item, which I is a uh, just another book, I think. So there's another two progressionists towards the achievement done now we can just carry on you can't go through the gate sadly which is obviously typical because that's video games climb under these wooden beams and what you're supposed to do is go directly to the right i go to the left so don't follow me hey there he is look i realized my mistake eventually see i didn't steer down the wrong path for too long did i so it all works out in the end You who 
So now then, there is only one more thing we've got to do. So from this point, um, I don't think it really matters if you crouch, just don't sprint. But just go towards the left, you'll recognize this bit from the tutorial as well. Keep heading forward until you see these cultists lying down on these big old rocks here. You can't wake them, so it doesn't matter. Just go behind them to uh, interact with yet another mural. And then what you'll need to do is just, just wait behind these rocks here as a one of the cultist guys walk past. I mean, you could throw something at him, but you know, you'd be caught and you'd be all messed up and stuff. I'm trying to be serious on this uh, guide through, uh, on this walk through, I promise. <laughs> Slightly. Just wait for him to walk by. He apparently he can't hear you. Apparently he couldn't see a big old beard in the way. So you should be good to go now. So that's Bradley messed up, and now what we've got to do is run. You unlock another achievement right here called the Temple, and it's not the cultist you've got to worry about. It's if you stay still for too long, you will get crushed by a rock. So just keep moving forward. Keep taking the same path I do. There's only one path, but obviously you try to go down one, and the other gets blocked off. So keep on running, boy. Light! At last! And welcome to chapter 5. Now this one is very different to what we've been used to so far. This is more of a stealth mission. And we are basically in a mental asylum. As we always do end up in these types of games. But there's not that many guards about, so there's not a lot to really worry about. Um, they're not the AI is not fantastic in this game, to be honest. When it comes to you know, you see, you've seen it in other games. If you get spotted, you've got to run for your bloody life or be prepared to kill. This one, they can look at you and go, "I did see him," but apparently these guys don't get paid enough to give a crap. So there we go. Just keep staring out the window for just a minute then, while this little cutscene plays out. If I go out, he'll see me. No! No! You're leaving this cell! Please. I don't want him to find me. Then just simply turn around and go and take a nap. It can be quite tiring being in a mental hospital when there's nothing wrong with you. Or when there's everything wrong with you. Either way, it's a tiring old experience, but now we wake up in like this sort of dreamlike state. Again, there's nothing really to collect or do anything here, you just gotta keep progressing forward, and you'll start getting into a little conversation with the Leviathan. Scurry. You there. Wake up. Come on, stand up. We don't have much time. Hmm. 
Now this is Dr. Marie Colden. She will play quite a prominent key in your life as well. Dialogue options don't matter either, so pick whatever. And now we can finally progress with the level. So before turning left and going straight through, go straight ahead into the other room for a reconstruction. And again, just follow what I do on screen. You can't, by the, by the way, you can't actually leave a reconstruction until everything has been interacted with. So never worry about missing one or anything like that. Sarah. In his eyes, this symbol must have some protective virtues. Sarah Hawkins is on this list. What did he write about the painting? <laughs> That's that one done then. There's nothing else to collect in the room. So now we can move forward. Just go towards the end where the double doors are and open that up for another small cutscene. I'd like to say that I'm surprised to see you, but we all know that your curiosity will be your ruin. I don't understand. These people need care. You keep them in this terrible place as if... Go back upstairs where your patients are waiting for you to treat them. As for you, gentlemen, do not disappoint me anymore. No one enters or leaves. Yes, Doctor. Now, as I've said, there's not that many guards, and the AI is pretty poor when it comes to sort of spotting you, but obviously they still can't spot you, so you've got to be careful. So, from this point then, just crouch, you're going to have to stay crouched for the majority of this mission now, I'm afraid, if you wanted to do this quick, <laughs> but you can. So, crouch, go into the left room here, we, we're going to pick up a few things, there's no guards in this room, so you don't worry about it, you can sort of stand up, do whatever. Nothing in that desk, so you can swiftly move on there. Eventually, there he goes. Medical record of Francis Sanders then. And Sanders was the guy who was opposite our room, being taken out, uh, kicking and screaming. Go to the dead body, just interact with him, and then interact with the limbs in the sink. How delicious. I hope this is not putting you off your food. Yeah, if you're a fat bastard like me, it didn't anyway, so it's all good. Go into the big cage where the chair is, and there should be a police badge. Which is your hidden item. So now we are good to go. I think that's everything in this room, so now we can move on. There's nobody that guards this way. There's just two guards in an open room to the right, so they don't actually walk around this area, so you should be safe. But again, keep crouching just in case. Go into the sort of middle office area here to find another medicine book. And there will be a wheel, which we will need, just to the left as well. Might sound stupid, but we need it. So then from this area, just go to the left. We'll be coming through that door a little bit later on. Don't worry about it for now. Um, there actually isn't a guard that guards this area yet. So it's just double checking to be sh uh, just to be safe. Go and talk to this inmate. And um, basically what we'll need to be doing is get him some sleeping pills and we'll need it for an achievement. So just agree to getting them. And if we want to 100% this game, we're going to do it anyway. Right then, so we've now got a few things to do. So go back to the main sort of area, the main foyer bit. You know, always just keep watch out. Again, there should be nobody around this area. But now we need to be going into the kitchen, which is this room right here. And what we need to do is wait for the chef to nip off to the right. It might, it may take a while, but it's just better to stay just to the left to the door. Press RB to uh, crouch around, and you see just where the white symbol is. He, he's seen me, 
But he ain't doing piss all about it. Again, it's always hard to tell where he is. You'll just have to sort of stay here and then just wait until he nips off to the right. Be patient, I promise. And there he goes, bloody finely. So you'll have to be quick with this bit then. So go towards the left. And on the main desk here, there will be two keys. You need to pick up both of these keys right here. And then crouch back down, get out of the door quick as you can before he comes back. You've got a little bit of time anyway, but again, just be safe than sorry. Just do it quick. Get your ass out of there. And close the door so he doesn't suspect anything I'm pretty sure he doesn't anyway but it's a again it's a just-in-case thing you'll see what I mean by how poor the AI is now so we're gonna go and close the kitchen door now but oh what's that he sees me peek around the corner <laughs> again if he does that and if it does start going red just back away um, run round to another corner, something like that. They give up. They give up quite quickly, quite easily. But close the kitchen door anyway, and just go back on yourself to the right of you. There is a door that you can pick lock. Uh, but before we do that, we need to put a lot of CP points into our investigation. So go ahead and do that. This will obviously give you higher skill points and a better chance of completing certain pick locks and things like that. So, but every time I've done this, again, three times I've played through this and it's worked every single time. But there is another way to get in anyway and we have to go through both doors to do it. So I'll show you in a little bit. But anyway, there's a guard that travels in both rooms. We need to be in the next room to grab the sleeping pills for the inmate. And you can always tell when the guard is coming. You'll see a bright yellow light on the floor from his torch. So it's pretty obvious. But it's always worth, again, being a stealth mission. You can try and be the hero, but it's honestly worth just waiting. Even though we can't take a piss-ass long time. Oh, here he comes. So you've seen just there that yellow bit of light on the floor. Just go ahead, hide around the door for a minute. And again, there's that light, there's the guard then, so you'll be able to tell when he's coming and when he's going. There he goes. Go to the right of the table here to pick up this wheel. Again, that's important, we'll need that. And just follow the guard. So if you fail the lock pick to get in this room, this is the other way you can get in. Just opposite the kitchen. So go to the right when you're in this room. Be careful though, the guard will sort of stop and he'll have a look around, so... Again, try not to get in his direct vision of view. Wait until he turns around. And there are three items we can grab now. So the first one, you're going to have to stand up for it. And that is the sleeping pills. My new friends. Which he needs. Go to the left, there is uh, medicine. Let's go polamine, morphine. Uh, a bit of morphine or whatever. And a book on the table. Grab those three quickly. Crouch down and then... Go exactly where I do, just to the right of the door. He will not see you here. And in fact, I think I've just done a bit of good timing on this one. I think he's going to just pop around now. Okay, apparently I had a little bit of time. But there he goes then. He will not see you as long as you're behind this door, between the door and the little uh, cart or whatever it was. So now we should be good to go. Obviously, just go back through the room he came. It's just easier. Again, if you missed it, the wheel was there earlier on. So grab that on your way out. And we're coming up now to the end of Chapter 5. And remember the two keys that we grabbed earlier. We'll be using that other one 
in a short moment, but let's go back to the inmate to get him his sleeping pills. I've got what you want. Show me! There. And once you give him, then the guard will be on his way, so turn quickly back around, run around the corner, and you should be safe and good to go. So from this point then, then we've done the kitchen, we've done all the rooms on the left, so they are all done. Now, skip past this room on the right, and there should be another locked door. And this is where we're using this second key that we picked up then from earlier on. Let's go ahead, open that up. Don't worry, nobody's in here. You've got nothing to worry about at this point. Close the door just in case the um, the um, nobody guards pops around. And what we'll do then, turn around and there should be that little vent just there. Uh, basically what we're doing now is planning our escape. So, go on then, pop through, I tell you what, I, I play like a freaking two-year-old on times, just looking at stuff and going, ooh, shiny stuff. You'll have to be quick on this point though, as he gets a little uh, claustrophobic, so again, there's only one path to take, so just blast on straight through there. The green gas leaves from here, and it runs through the whole building. So then, first things first, interact now with this little pipe thing here. That'll um, sort out the wheel, and then you can turn that. There's a few wheels and things we'll need to be turning in this little area. Go ahead, grab the bolt cutters off there, so we can go through the gate. Turn this wheel on the left right here. Yeah, this game, there's some parts of the game goes real nice and sort of uh, fast paced and then there's other times of the game where it sort of slows down quite a bit. Anyway, nip down the stairs. Don't get caught in the chain link fence like I did apparently. Go up these stairs and there's a note which is on the left hand side right here. You'll need to pick that up, so go ahead and read. And then let's just nip back down. This is before we uh, turn in more wheels, go into this desk here. The middle of it is another memo. To the right of it is nothing. But to the left, I believe. No, sorry, no, we're done. It's just the uh, two lets to pick up in this area. <laughs> so you go inside the uh, KG looking bit there. Onto the right, there is another wheel to pop on and turn. Got to apologise about the sort of slow paceness of this part. I, I was sort of looking through my notes, wondering which bits I was uh, having to do and where to do them. And yeah, anyway, but we're almost done now. Anyway, so this lever must turn on the gas machine. There we go. That's what you've got to do. Then click that on, turn on the gas machine, <laughs> and now we are good to go. I we can't go through the main the entrance. Seat. So what we need to do is go back the way we came, through the little hole in the wall right there, the little vent. So the two guards that were blocking the exit earlier on should now be gone. Again, keep uh, crouching just in case, um, but you should actually be good to go at this point. Go down the hallway here, open up the door, and now this is where we see Francis Sanders. With a little bit of um, weird shit going on. But yeah, dialogue options, again, don't matter at this point. So pick what you want or just follow Give me. You're Sanders, aren't what? You're. 
in her office. I saw the what 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 sand. No, Sanders. <laughs> What the hell? I got I got it. Now I'm pretty sure this is where the game starts really kicking off with the weirdness side of things anyway. As you'll see, but um, we're basically now at the very end of the chapter. Gas is gonna get pierced. Keep going through, keep going through the double doors and everything. Damn. And this is the end. The gas. Oh, my head. Later. We need to move on. Who goes there? So then, welcome back to the Hawkins Mansion. Remember, we had a no, little no, sift through on chapter three. There's a couple of things in this chapter. Uh, this is where we will see our very first boss fight. He's actually not too bad at all. Um, and also, remember the um, diary of uh, the pastor's wife, which we got near the skeleton and the murals. Um, again, don't worry about dialogue options at this point just pick the uh, quickest one but yeah remember the diary there's another diary that we have to collect in this chapter which i actually missed but i slow down the video and i'll tell you exactly where you've got to go to pick it up it's easy it's right in front of you anyway but somehow i missed it so you know, just come to that a little bit later on when we get there but for now exit the conversation exit the mansion now we're going to end up in irene sanders house uh, francis sanders wife and the dialogue on this point then is actually very important especially when you're talking to irene here since this business has got nothing to do with me i'll be in your husband's office irene we'll carry on later very well miss baker so basically what you need to do is blame her for sending uh, francis to the mental asylum by saying it wasn't me who sent him there but again just follow the exact same dialogue options i do and you'll get it eventually anyway. Yesterday. He started right that I'm not really, but it's best. I, I need to under- Did you not do- So here it is. It wasn't me who sent him there. Make sure to click that one. And that is for an achievement later on. It was you. What, wait, until if- I'm not- uh. Did your husband- uh, It's all who- it, then for my- so that's good for now, we've just got a few things to do in this room. Head over to the piano then, and there's a few little keys that we've got to do. It's one, two, three, four, two. And then that will open up the uh, secret drawer and give you an occult item. Was he seeking to acquire it? Next thing we have to do then, there is a photo which is on the fireplace that will trigger a reconstruction scene by uh, pressing really and holding the all. LT and RT after you read the letter on the table there, sorry. So click yeah, this and then the just follow the video lives. again for where to find the interaction items. Francis Sanders and Sarah Hawkins were close. Friends? Sanders' accession register. What did... He finally won. Was... She first refused to sell it. Ah! The Shambler. I 
And there we go, that's the Shambler, the boss, big old creature monster boy will be hidden in a Let's bit. Go and pick up this cylinder and turn around and go ahead and play it on the phonograph to play it. And there's nothing you can do, you can't skip it or anything, so just keep on listening. And Sanders looks pissed off. That it might be too late for me. Nobody should enter, except to burn everything. I never had the courage. Pay somebody to do it. He's inside my head. I see him behind my eyelids. Each time I shut my eyes. anymore. I can't hold him back. Forgive me. Francis, I should never let them take you away. What have I done? Everything is my fault. Right, so turn around then, head to the left and go down the hallway. Now, this is the room where the diary is that I mentioned earlier on. First of all, um, don't worry about talking to Cat for a second. Look at the unholy book. This will trigger an achievement. You have to read this, so go ahead and do it. And yeah, it's coming up very, very shortly where, the, where I missed the diary, but hopefully you guys won't That's either. Talk to Cat then as well. Again, dialogue doesn't matter. Pick whatever you want here. Another paint. What it I found her. What the there is. This is a strength test. Again, all the three playthroughs I've done, it's worked every time. So hopefully, it should be the same for you. Now, this is the point then. So turn around here, and you see just on the right, on the box next to the paintings there where the interaction um, button pops up, that is where the diary is. So make sure to pick that one up. As you see, I just walked past it, but hopefully you guys pick it up. And then go to this uh, little file desk cabinet there to pick up a letter from Sarah Hawkins. So again, hopefully you guys picked up that diary that I missed. Sorry to <laughs> mess you about like that. On the floor there to the left of the table is the whale and the god. Go and pick that one up. There's another item here, an amulet to pick up as well. And there's one more item on this desk, the bottle of sleeping pills. And hopefully you should also get the jack of all trade achievements by now as well. If not, there's plenty of other items to um, pick up and have a look at for you to get it a bit later on. So you won't be missing out on much there. So you should get it later regardless. I don't know what I was doing with the sleeping pills then. Probably sleeping by the sounds of things. But once you've got everything in this room, hopefully including that diary, remember that diary, move the suitcase, grab that book, and now we can go into the boss room. And I say boss room as if it's something real scary. It's not. All we have to do really is um, grab one dagger. It's got to be a specific Man dagger. So this is the painting then. Once you interact with the painting, that's when the boss fight starts. But... To help yourself which dagger you need, there is a little picture of it right here. And it's that specific dagger that we need. So, if you want then, we might as well just do a practice run. So, once you interact with this painting, you'll start from about, roughly about here. This is where you'll start, because the shambler will actually come out with the painting, try to mess you up, son. So this is the direction we will go. You can't go through there. That's where the shambler will be guarding that door and mess you up. So this is the route you need to take. And this is the dagger, so and you'll need to press A twice to grab it, and then run back. So there you go, that's, <laughs> hopefully that's the good practice routine done, and now let's begin. So, interact with it, press A, skip through this cutscene, and obviously it gets a bit darker as well. So what obviously turn your brightness that? up if you're having <laughs> trouble seeing. So let's just go for it. Don't even don't worry about the noises. Just run straight for the dagger. Press A twice. Wants to smash it. Wants to pick it up. Don't be scared of the noises. He, he'll sort of sound like he's behind you. Don't stop the look. Just bash it out straight at him, and then press A when you get to the painting, and you will unlock two old achievements.
You sure you won't be needing that hand? You're losing. I saw you with an... Sanders was right. The what are you talking? I was attacked. I... I ran. If I the door, I like you don't fly and but you should talk. This symbol on the dagger. It's if this you've got your Welcome then to chapter 7. This is the shortest chapter in the game. This one's uh, nice and easy. No enemies or anything to worry about. So, first thing we need to do, turn directly to your left and you'll find another diary of the pastor's wife. So this will be the third one. And hopefully, like I said, you picked up the one in chapter 6 that I missed. I did say enough time, so hopefully you should be good to go. Uh, go towards the end of the bookstore, turn on your lamp and then get another item, uh, in fact, it's, it's uh, another unholy book of knowledge. What does this strange book contain? This book contains unholy knowledge. So we're almost done with unlocking the Oculatist achievement. And you can pick up a few things, it's another medicine book, I mean, if you're still short on... Um, Inspection items, etc. There's loads of books in here you can read to boost that up anyway. So, ignore that room for a second. We're just going into the first room and we'll be doing another reconstruction scene. So, again, just follow me to get it with Easy Cheesy Lemon L. Squeezo. Let's start over. Where did they break in from? Blood. Seems like amateur work. Someone tall left this footprint. A man, probably. This burglar seems to be rather clumsy. What happened that made the burglar flee before finishing his work? What killed all these animals? What sort of thief leaves his tools at the crime scene? symbol rejected Hawkins. What sort of power did Sarah Hawkins' painting possess? Sarah Hawkins helped hide something in the safe. Drake put in a great deal of everything as so that reconstruction's done. Hopefully it's been easy enough for you guys. I've tried going sort of as slow as I can to make it easy for you guys. But anyway, once you're out of that, move the books on the Drake bookcase and on how to find the grab this letter of Drake's memoirs. And then go towards the desk in the back. Nothing in the left drawer, so go to the middle one and there's Isn't another bottle of sleeping pills. sleeping pills. The characters in this game have some real issues. Uh, in the right, there is a, another item for you to pick up. And now we need to find the hidden item, which is n not those books. You can pick it up anyway for medicine and for extra inspection items to go towards the Jack of All Trades achievement. You haven't got it yet. But the left, it's what we're looking at. Strange amulet. Is that amulet right there in between the books? Sorry guys, just looking over my old notes again then. So now we have got a lot of CP points, we can just bang them all into investigation. And like I said, spot hidden investigation, they're the two main ones we needed to do, and bang, they are done now. So you can just distribute the rest equally, or if you prefer to put it in anything of your choice, it's literally up to you from now on. But the 
two most important ones are done. So that's job done. Happy days. Now what we'll need to do then is crack the safe code. Now, if you want to do the game properly, <coughs> probably, probably, properly, Christ, I can't even get my words out still. What you'd need to do is move the blackboards near the forbidden book from earlier to reveal some cylinders. But because we're not going to do that, the code is 539. 539 is the safe code. Go ahead, smash that out for a cutscene. And that will be the end of chapter 7. All right, dialogue here again doesn't matter, but just choose what I do for the quickest route through it a minute. Uh, but what we will be doing is, well, healing, and I say that with quotation marks, as I say it, all of the patients. But all we basically be doing is just examining them and or slash reading their medical reports and just interacting with them when necessary. It's not too hard. But again, like I said, just follow... Where I go and the patients I examine and jobs a good un. I see some and he sleep at I almost don't believe no and And here is the famous Dr. Fuller looking like a giant bald bell end with a few pubes around his balls for mouths as we do. Now these two achievements here Remember in the Nameless Bookstore in Chapter 7, you read the last unholy book of knowledge and the occult items. For some reason for me, they unlocked here, but they should unlock sound enough for you they should unlock perfectly enough for you once you read the last unholy book of knowledge in chapter seven so you should get those two there so i don't know why he did that also hopefully with me just blasting through the dialogue like this hopefully it's okay for you guys and you're not getting too hopefully i'm not sort of rushing you guys and gals too much and then it's going well but um yeah apologies if it is rushing you out a little bit so anyway, this is the first patient then we'll need to see. Again, just follow exactly, see exactly who I do. You can't interact with all of them. Sometimes you can only read their medical files. Sometimes you can only examine them. So there's not that many on this floor, but just go ahead and follow me. Follow the leader, leader, leader. Follow the leader. Oi! Hey, fever. What's he doing here? What? Uh, yeah. Is, what did you? No, uh, he broke his back in an accident down by the docks. She recently came back from the surgical block. She's stable. Given her file, a nephrectomy would have been inevitable. But Fuller was able to save her kidney. Another insomniac. I should find the cause for such a widespread trouble. Dr. Colden, here you are at last. This patient was again brought up to the psychiatric wing. We've been following the treatment you prescribed, but the dyskusia persists and he's lost a great deal of weight. We haven't been able to move him. The stress makes him hyperallergic. Sir, I am going to examine you. Do you understand? Inject him with a dose of pentobarbital, intramuscular, so that I can conduct the clinical examination. He bit his lips so what? His binds left bloody. You did good up in the. It'll be. Right then, slight problem again, I messed up on this run, so the achievement for me is going to unlock here. But it won't unlock here for you yet, because we haven't, because <laughs> we're not done. So ignore this achievement for now, yours will pop a little bit later on. Again, just keep following me, we've still got a few couple of patients, including, and this is another important one, remember Irene Sanders, who we told her she should feel guilty for sending her husband to a mental asylum, as she should. Uh, we just need to read her file and examine her, which we're going to do anyway. So just keep following me. Intoxication from and I will papers. tell you, and basically the achievement then will unlock when we speak to two guys just outside sitting on a bench. So here is Irene Sanders. 
and this again will go towards another achievement later on. There's a lot of that, a lot, a lot of clever sort of achievements in this game. To be fair, whether you like or dislike the game, I thought the achievements were pretty clever. Doctor, please, uh, my chest. Oh. His perfusion of a semi-physiological solution doesn't seem to work. He's undergoing a ventricular fibrillation. Nurse, his uh, thank you. Right, if you're unsure, you can have one last look around, but if you've been following this video, you should be good to go. So just go outside, talk to these two guys, and they'll talk about this sick mother. Um, they'll have different dialogue to me because I've already spoken to them, obviously. And this is where your achievement will unlock right now. So, bloop! The Hippocratic Oath. Congratulations, you did it! So now then, now we can finally crack on. That did take up a bit of time, but... Hey, the stuff you do for achievements, right? It's like the same stuff you do for love, except... Except achievements is love. Am I right? I'm right. I hope I can go through the administration office. Anyway, we can't get through Dr. Fuller's office because that's how every single game works. You don't get it that easy, ever. Try go through the administration office and bitch tits here will stop you. I mean, doctor. She does look like a bitch though, doesn't she? So again, we're going to need to do a couple of things. And the first thing we need to do then is go into the bathing station. Yeah, <laughs> so... Sorry, sounds like Babe Station. <coughs> anyway, I don't watch that's disgusting. Everything's disgusting. Here's the bathing station. Go and talk to the nurse. I've lost my head at this point again. Sorry, but thanks for sticking by again. And the water was once again. Come now. We're at car. So once you've spoken with the nurse here, turn around, go to the left, don't worry about going to the right. Go to the left and take another right This down this hallway. There's Dr. Fuller's office and the boiler room. Right here is where we need to be going, but obviously it's locked because, like I said, that's how it all works out. Every game ever. So now we need a key. So just take the route I do. We're just going back to the, um, into the room where all the patients are. It's basically a straight, and it's just in this desk right here, then. It's on the right-hand side drawer. Let's go ahead and pick that up. If you try and pick this up beforehand, for some reason, you can't actually pick it up. All she says is, oh, it's the key to the boiler room. And she does nothing about it, so, yeah, you got to do it this way. Head back towards the boiler room. Because uh, basically, obviously, if you haven't got it by now, all we're doing is trying to get a distraction so Nurse Bitch Tits can go away so we can go into Fuller's office. And look at this. Something else that goes wrong. Oh, we can't move the wheel now. This is just frigging great. So now we need to get a tool, namely a pipe wrench. So out of the boiler room, go to the right. At the end, go to the right again and go into this door. There's two doors go into the left side one here, and there will be like a pipe wrench or something of similar magnitude. Yeah, it is a pipe wrench, so. Go back to the boiler room then. If you want to stick around and see those uh, nurses having a little bitch and everything, it's, it, it's quite funny actually. Not that I'm a judgy person, obviously, I just... Like it when they put NPCs who bitch about other NPCs in video games. Alright, so now that's finally done then. Now we can go back to the nurse in the babe station room. I mean, bathing room, obviously. That's what I always mean. And, yep, skip through her dialogue quick. And now we can go to the right and the nurse will be gone. She's there. So now that will give us access to Dr. Bellen's room. Fuller's room. So then, we are coming up to another achievement now. Go straight up to the boat, which is right here, which will be right in front of you. And to unlock the secret compartment, all you got to do is turn the middle mast right twice, and the right mast right once. So it's the middle mast right twice, and the 
rightmost mast right once. I hope that made sense. But anyway, you've seen it. <laughs> you see me do it anyway. You got it there. So pick up the cylinder. You'll get the white ship achievement as well. I was right. And you'll have to use it next to the table, and that will begin an investigation. Conclusions. Session number 17. Patient. Sarah Hawkins. Why is Ethan on medication? It goes without saying that these peculiar delusions are the price that comes with her exceptional gifts. This finger belonged to a woman. Why keep it here? Why does Dr. Fuller write psychological reports about Sarah Hawkins? At first, I presumed that her blood was the key. But I found nothing to explain Mrs. Hawkins' abilities. The poor souls downstairs are not Fuller's only subjects. Then James came. I read that Charles was keeping secrets from him. I presume that he will try to break into the basement sooner or later. I am prepared. Hawkins, Fitzroy, and Fuller. What is the connection between these three? <laughs> Presence of mind to set the mall in the basement. When all the fuss about the Hawkins incident finally comes to an end, I will dispose of her belongings. In the meantime, they must remain hidden in plain sight. Of course! Sarah Hawkins is the connection. So yeah, just in case you didn't realise then, you had to wait for the dialogue to finish before you could uh, carry on with that. But now we are done in this room, we are basically done with this level. We can now exit out and we'll be heading on to chapter 9. So head out the way you came, go straight down to the metal gate at the very, very end. Now we'll be heading down to the basement and it's where old Bellend Head will... Well, I won't spoil it for you a minute. So just ignore the old bell end head comment if you could <laughs> for just a second. Head down the stairs. There's only really one path for us to take now. Uh, just go through the double doors and that's chapter 8 done. Oh, now I can spoil it for you. So old bell end head is going to knock us out basically. Q. I could count on your scientific curiosity. It's time to show you what you were so eager to discover. Sorry, chapter 8 is almost done. What you'll need to do is accept Drake's help. Make sure to accept it and you'll get two achievements. Oh, the book. Have you read? Answer. Now you, what did it show? She went and she was looking. Sarah, huh? let's go back to whose life did Dr. Cold? She's in danger. I have to go. Wait, you might need. M all right, all right. I might need you after. Perfect. Thank you.
And now we are on to the longest and pretty much most pain in the RC chapter of the entire game. Now this first bit is rather easy, but it's the next bit after this which can get slightly confusing. So first things first then, take a look in the draw. Again, I've, all three playthroughs I've managed to get unlock this draw with no problems because that's another diary done. So again, if you're investigation and spot hidden's five by five by now, you should be unlocking stuff with no issues. Go to the desk drawer, uh, the desk filing cabinet at the end of the room, the opposite side, to get some sleeping pills. And that should be the all of these small blue sleeping pills discovered and good to go. And there is another unholy book on the table on the opposite side of that as well, so give that a little read. And remember in chapter 8 I said that we'd read all the unholy book of knowledges? Sorry, the, the one that unlocked there was basically an unmissable achievement. Right. This is where you unlock, unlock the read all the books of the unholy knowledge, the complete revelation have. achievement. So now we are coming up to the real pain in the ass of the chapter, to be honest. Um, it's sort of like a real... A very interesting concept, very interesting puzzle, so... Ignore that bit, that's just Pierce shitting himself. And now, this bit. So there are two, basically there are two lanterns you'll be needing to get. One is in the real world, which we are in, and you'll need to follow this light to sort of... Just basically just progress the level, so you skip through this portal here. And... The other lantern, which you'll need to start picking up, will transfer you into an alternate world where everything's lighter, everything's in black and white, but everything's light, you can see where you're going. It's basically, I think it's more or less Marie Colden's um, memories, but through this we can actually open doors, like so, and then when we go back to the other lantern, that door will now be open for us, because it would, again, if we tried going through it in the real world, it wouldn't be working because it would just be locked. So, follow the light here, Follow where I go, and then just press and hold the right trigger button. That will save the game for you and transfer you back to the start point. So that's the main premise of it then. All we're doing is looking for three large symbols. So go forward here then, and press the right trigger. This will get rid of the barrier, and then directly on your left, you can go through another portal. And from this point, you might be looking a bit confused, so just run outside the sort of main doors it is slightly confusing go to the right here and that is where you will find the other lantern now just another little word of advice so sorry this this place does get confusing so i apologize if i mislead you so open up this door here so we can go through it in the real world now when we are in the real world and we're following the light best advice to take is to run because if you walk and the oil lamp sort of burns out and goes out, you will die and I have to start again. But it's never a, a necessity to follow the light because you'll always get stuck, so just follow where I go and go through the portal here. And now we can follow the light. Press and hold right trigger and you'll end up back at the start again. So you see what I mean, if you just try and follow the light, you'll end up getting stuck and lost and you'll have no idea where you're going. So again, very interesting, but it is quite confusing area, so I do apologise if I try to not mislead you as best I can. But um, yeah, I try to go through it as smooth as I can, but hopefully it's helping you guys anyway. So go into the room on the left after you get rid of that barrier, just get rid of this barrier as well. And there is a monster there. Pierce, again, is going to poop his pants, as we all would, to be fair. So go back and get the other lantern. And what we can do then is just take the, the other lantern back, because it'll just refill itself anyway. So go into the left room where you got rid of the last barrier then. Just run with it, run with it. Keep hugging the right hand side though, and it'll be on the floor right around here. They're not too hard, but because of the darkness, if you do, you can easily get lost. It's very easy to get lost. You are confronting powers that surpass you. So for me then, I'd say that the hardest part is really done now. So just follow the light. Once, a, 
again we've got rid of most of the barriers we just need to get rid of this one right here and then turn right back around to go and grab the other lantern to go and open dr fuller's office so really it should be pretty much straightforward from here So this is the last time we'll be needing to do this then. Again, you should have enough oil even if you do get a little bit stuck, but it really should just be generally straightforward. Again, don't bother following the light. If you'll remember it from chapter 8, you'll get there. Big old jump scare then. You know what, I kept forgetting about it and shit myself on all three times, every, <laughs> every time. <laughs> so, you know, hopefully it doesn't um, scare you as much. But it even crapped me up then, just doing the recording again, so I friggin' hate that bit. Anyway, we're done. We're finally done with the like bloody pissy right. lanterns. So now then we're just going the same way as Marie Colden went, Dr. Colden, just down the basement. Although it's going to start getting a little bit trippy in just a moment. So now we've headed through the double doors then, it's not like it was in chapter 8. Wait until Pia says something about it being an endless hallway and then look at one of the doors on the right and you should see yourself. What's going on? It never ends. Damnation. That's... That's me. And for this next bit, just continue spinning around. Keep continuing to spin around, don't stop. You're starting to get a bit uh, disorientated again, as we all would, but just don't stop, and eventually an um, exit will clear for you. So there it is there, now we'll just continue walking forward, and we see a shadowy figure in the distance. Pierce, I found her. I finally know what's going on. You must live and find the truth. It is already too late for me. Colden? <laughs> What's going on? Was it a hallucination? Again, this next bit's easy enough. It's literally just skip this cutscene. And it's just walking through a couple of doors for a moment. <laughs> Colden? <sighs> And at the end of all those doors, ta-da, we have found Sarah Hawkins. She's not dead. Now, very important bit. You're going to get a bit of dialogue option with a bunch of symbols. And that is called Relayan. Relayan? I just call it Relayan anyway. I could be wrong. Apologies if it is. But that is what we need to be picking. Every single time we need to be picking Relayan options. So you see the little symbols there? There's nine op You've got to get all nine. There's nine opportunities to do it through the game. We need to do all nine. I'll obviously tell you exactly when and where they're coming up, but you need to make sure to pick all nine. Now, for some reason, I think an update actually messed it up where you don't get the achievement at the end of the game, but I do... You've got to do it in, like, a different way, which I managed to do in playthrough too, so I'll explain that just a little bit later on. We're going to be chased by a couple of guards now, though. So, as soon as it starts, run directly to your left, and then just keep smashing it. Just keep going. They, they shouldn't be able to catch you. Sarah Hawkins is a bit slow. Move out my way. Move out my friggin' way. Thanks. And there you go. Easiest chase scene in history. 
but that bit is done. Wait. So yeah, as I was saying with the relaying, like I said, I'll be telling you exactly when and where they're coming up anyway. Uh, excuse me, I know you've had a hard time, but get the fudge out of my way. Yeah, I'll be t <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'll be letting you know exactly when and where they're coming up. Um, but yeah, like I said, apparently a lot of people, including myself, weren't able to unlock it the first time through because of maybe an update or something. But like I said, we will be unlocking it in the second playthrough, which we need to be doing anyway to unlock the final two endings. So don't worry, hopefully an update again sorts that out. But if it doesn't, again, don't panic because we'll be getting it in playthrough two anyway. No, but I. <laughs> so we're not coming too far from the end now, we've just got a little bit of exploring, a little bit of collectibles and things to get now. So first things first then, what we can do is if you've got any spare CP points, again just put them into uh, whatever you fancy, whether you just want to, again, just uh, spread them out a little bit or anything, go ahead and do that. Right, so there's conversation going on downstairs then. Before we go downstairs, you're going to see Officer Bradley directly in front of you now, sitting on a table, so go and speak to him. And what you need to do then is make sure to tell him the truth. Don't lie, tell him the truth. And next he'll have another relaying option, the um, all symbols option, so make sure to choose that one as well. Have no fear, Bradley. Dr. Fuller will not escape the clutches of destiny for long. Sooner... What are you... No, we need your... Now then we can head downstairs and chat to Sarah and Drake. And again, make sure to not have any drinks in this area. And that'll get us the... More sober than Zadok Allen achievement later on. So what we can do for now then is... Simply... Talk to Sarah. And during the second conversation option, we will have another relaying option, the all symbols, so go ahead and choose that. You want to hunt Where? in the basement? I'm so I'm I am the only No. I owe this you would re I no. I I will not You can't give up what? You that out how or no, that's done then. Now we just follow the path to go and find Drake. There was a drink that was on the table in the main room, by the way. So again, as long as you steer clear, just if you just be following me, you'll get it with no problems. As hopefully you have been doing it throughout the game so far. So Drake now will also have a relay and option. So watch out for the symbols and again, make sure to click that. We are feel. What is the true nature? It that it I I I am it what it I I am that. So what we're looking for then is an amulet, and basically these are little clues which will help us get it. And also, I bet when I told you his name was Algernon Drake or just Drake, I bet you thought a cool adventure guy, Nathan Drake or the singer Drake, which some people like, not me personally, but. Uh, uh, sadly, it's obviously just nerdy boy, but hey, there's nothing wrong with nerdy boys though. <laughs> Trust me, I'm half a nerd myself. Anyway, we're going into the room we went in earlier, if you remember, during chapter 3, into the room with the um, demon ritual circle. And the bust will be right there, but before we leave, interact with the ritual circle once again, and we'll be into a reconstruction well, scene. telling the truth.
What kind of ritual was she preparing? Was the painting of the Shambler displayed here? Mrs. Hawkins never told me why she was in possession of the Necronomicon. She was trying to send back the Shambler. How did she react? Was she afraid? Charles Hawkins was ready to do anything to protect his wife. If the amulet can protect Sarah Hawkins from the influence of the mythos, I must find it. So once that's done then, all we're doing is heading back to where we woke up a little bit earlier on. So just follow straight, no need to go downstairs, past the table with Officer Bradley on, and that is where we'll find the amulet, or amulet. Go down and talk to Drake, and then the chapter will more or less be over. This is the amulet that Drake was looking for. Also, by the way, if you couldn't get the first relaying option to appear, grabbing the amulet will lower your sanity requirements uh, necessary to get the second option of his relaying option. So if you miss it out the first time with this first conversation, don't worry, you'll be able to get it at this point, if you missed it out, that is. I think I've found what we're looking for. Yeah. I must, yes. I have it. I can eat what I this store. Yes! Chief West is here with. So there's that one then, there are, well there were only three opportunities to drink throughout the entire game. So as long as you didn't touch one, as long as you've just been following along, then you would have got that easily. So chapter 10 is now the second Shambler boss fight. All good, I hope. Um, it's a little, it appears that a tiny bit more trickier than the first than the first one, because obviously we were just grabbing a dagger, slicing them up. It's going to take a little bit longer, but again it's not too bad at all. Um, and this point as well, you're going to get, basically, Irene Sanders ended up killing herself. So if you've done the first two things, which was, tell her it was her own fault for sending Francis, her husband, to the mental asylum, and checking on her in Chapter 8 in the hospital, then you will get the achievement at this point as well. So that's all good. Now, as for the second boss fight, um, it's coming up just a little while, because we'll be playing as Sarah and Drake now. Because Pierce is in prison for something. And this is also Who's where there? he's going to start talking to the Leviathan and start getting his head completely messed up. So this is the conversation with the Leviathan then. All you have to do is click dialogue option struggle and then... Click dialogue option, accept the knowledge. I you are this is the more where is the oracle? Where is the oracle? And as long as you struggled and accepted the knowledge, you'll get another achievement here. Now, this is the part of the boss fight, and basically all you'll be doing then is 
like you were doing in chapter 9 with the lantern, pressing and holding the right trigger on three symbols. Algernon, come back! But this will actually make the Shambler appear. And what will happen is Drake will have like a protective shield over him or sort of around him, which the Shambler can't get into. So your job is to go to the symbols, light it up, and then sprint like hell to get there. But when you press the right trigger button, that slows the Shambler down, but obviously it uses more oil in the lantern. So, you know, it's more of a sprint and shine. Shine and sprint. Uh, whatever you want to call it, but you'll, you'll see what I mean now anyway. This was the worst part in the game for me because I, I got lost every single freaking time. So uh, even though there were stairs right in front of me the whole time, we. Right then, boss fight time. Like I said, this is not too bad at all once you sort of know exactly what you're doing. So this is the area then where Drake will be sort of protected. Always make sure to fill up your lantern with oil. The sh he uses gl then I m exact. How can I find? I will make by doing so. Perfect. And obviously, make sure to do that every single time you go for a run. So here we go then. There'll be four instances you'll have to. Go and do something and then run back to Drake. So the first one's up the stairs straight in front of you. Press and hold the right trigger button. You'll be stuck for just a moment, but keep your keep your thumb upwards on the left directional stick. Because now you'll go. And you'll see what I mean now. So press and hold the right trigger constantly and that will slow the shambler down. It's a hell of a protective barrier, this one. Make sure always to fill up. Make sure to completely always fill up now. Go to the left, up these stairs, and just around this rock right here. You'll move this metal sheet, and then the shambler will appear. And you'll really see what I mean now by having to basically conserve your... It's basically conserving, conserving your ammunition. Again, this bit's not too bad because it's quite close to it. But obviously, the, f the more distance you get, you'll have to sprint, sprint, um, lift up your lantern, sprint, lift up your lantern. You'll have to do a pretty conservative thing. So, go back to the same place that you were just now, and that is where the next symbol is. He's getting stronger and more aggressive. If he catches up with you, try blinding him. Sadly, this time you can't go the way you came, because, whoop, here he comes, pops out, so... This time we'll be going the long way around, so again try and you know there's only one way to do it. It's sort of hard to turn around, notice where he is. So yeah, you just there, see how quick he can be. So as long as you're quite conservative, always checking your back, always checking where you're going, you should be okay. Is when matters get complicated. Oh no, it's already here. Release me now. Alter! Quickly, bring him towards me. I thought I'd just leave that for you guys instead of having my annoying voice all over that. Now press, when you click on the painting right here, make sure to turn around immediately and press the right trigger to save Drake. So right now, turn around, press the right trigger and Drake will not get sucked up. With the Shambler enabling you to get another two cheeky boy achievements. It's over. Do you hear something? I can hear him. 
And that's the end of the second boss fight. Now, to be honest, in my opinion, the game gets easier as we get towards the end of the game. There's not, there's nothing that's really even tricky now. Plus, we can use a gun in Chapter 12, so all is well. Sarah Hawkins. Damn. So then, to be honest, now, these next four chapters, or three chapters, sorry, we got left, they're all relatively short, re relatively straightforward. They shouldn't pose too much of a problem. Uh, yeah, just keep watching the scene for a couple of secs. This are you st Those goddamn idiots. Right, so after you've taken a little nappy nap, a little grand granddad nap on the old uh, bench there, you're gonna start talking with the Leviathan once again. Um there's another relay an option, but you can pick anyone because they're all exactly the same, so there we go. Now, this is just a simple case then. He lets you out of prison. I don't know how it all works out because it's all grand though. I don't know. But you just keep interacting with each cell, keep watching the scenes, and we'll end up playing as Cat back in the Dark Water Port where we were in Chapter 2. Dom, what happened? So now we are playing as Cat and her, well, colleague who suspiciously looks like a character from Peaky Blinders. And basically we're interrogating these two fishermen, but as soon as the opportunity comes up to punch one of them, either left or right, it doesn't matter, anyone, take that option and you'll unlock another achievement for punching the crap out of someone. Your friend just gave... No, she... Who are you talking... Sorry... <sighs> They're completely useless. But yeah. Where up? Release our friends, you bunch of Yeah! They've done nothing wrong! Apart from killing a cop on our turf. That's who we How do you know they killed him? Do you want me to settle it with some lead? Dog always threatening us. Quieten these lunkheads down. I'll, I'll you know, I mean, to be fair to her, she's got one hell of a punch on her. I'll give her that. I wouldn't want to be on the uh, receiving end of that. But anyway, now we're into the warehouse. Go to the back, up the steps, and then to the back room right here, where we're going to see a dead police officer. Again, three times I played through this, and this worked every time. I can't imagine there's another way to get through, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. If and then we will have a little investigation reconstruction killing. scene again. Someone moved the corpse here. Where did the murder happen? We came from here.
down the stairs. So this is where West was killed. What's that? What the fuck is that? Where did it come from? He wasn't alone. There's only one man who smokes these gaspers. Fitzroy. You're not supposed to be- So now we're going to be able to use guns for the first time. Now immediately, as soon as you exit the door, press the right trigger, they're right there. So, I got caught out the first time, so... Like I said, as soon as you exit that little area, just... Kill those guys to death. As normally what happens when you kill someone. Um, and then just roam outside for a cutscene. And then some crazy ass shit starts happening. Get out of here! So we'll be grabbing another achievement basically straight away in chapter 12. Now you've got an option to kill or spare Officer Bradley. Make sure to spare him this time round. What my head? Whatever they did. Oh, we both know what I must I What do you mean? Shit in the dark. I'm turning, Pierce. Into one of those things. No! Keep fighting it, Bradley. Too late, do it. Enough killing. Now go, you imbecile. Sarah Hawkins. Going to so then now we are back at Darkwater Port where we were on chapter 2 only this time everyone's turned crazy and you've got a gun right trigger a gun uh, there's no other aim and option uh, be aware obviously some enemies will sort of pop out of corners and come round but they're not too difficult uh, my advice is just to shoot everyone dead to be honest you get an achievement for killing five of these things which should be now <laughs> if I wasn't such a terrible goddamn shot so yeah, I know it's not exactly, uh, you know, your first person shooter Call of Duty style epic, but, uh, you know, it's decent enough, it'll do, it'll do for a chapter. What the... was he like the others? So, you know, best advice, obviously, just keep looking around, keep checking around, seeing if anyone's coming. There's a guy right here, this is the oh, Harbour Master's office that we were at. Again, very early on in chapter 2, so nip in here right now. Only, of course, this time we won't get Fitzroy talking all types of crap to us. First thing we will need to do then is look at this it map on like the table right here. And that will enter another reconstruction investigation scene. So fun. And when they found me, they ate my flesh. And my flesh granted them powers and revelations. You are getting closer, truth seeker. The most precious of the The truth. The ultimate truth of life. If I prove anything to resurrect life, then it will only be a matter of time before I know how to create it. It will be the end of thoughts, be they ancient and powerful.
Someone with exceptional sensitivity to his dreams. This gift will lead him to this island. As I am the Oracle, I speak for him we cannot name. So that's where you know where those superpowers came from. They ate some Leviathan meat and they got them all, well, kind of messed up and stuff. After the scene, go into this back room, get a note from Fitzroy, the Grando. And then I think we're pretty much done in this room. We are indeed. So now we're going to go and shoot some more of these Abomination Nations after we get this another achievement, of course. Which is for finding all, well, there's about 26 or 27 hidden items. So you find 20 hidden items through the game, you should get it if you've been following along at this point. So now, move quite slowly, as I said, a couple of these abominations will sort of pop out of goddamn nowhere. Take your time. Like there's one. This, they're kind of hard to see, they're, they're kind of quiet, and if they notice you, they'll start running towards you, so just... And you've also got unlimited ammo, so that makes not much of a difference either. Keep heading towards this way. That is where we're going. We need to go get back into the warehouse we were at earlier on. Head through up towards the right. There's going to be a dying guy right here. They got the boss. Give a little I conversation with him. And be careful, once you enter this warehouse, one of the Abomination guys will come straight at you, so get ready to shoot him. Go in slowly, and then as soon as you hear the noise and the little grunt, he is on his way. So be careful of that guy. On the right-hand side here on the table is the first aid kit, so go ahead and pick that up. This might prove useful. Now, there are two people who are requiring first aid. We've got Cat, which is actually in the Harbour Master's office. And we've got another guy who... I forget his name at this point. That's not very good. But we get an achievement for him anyway. So that's who we'll be going for. So we're all good on this area. Exit out. Shit. They're going to the whaling station. I'd better hide and wait until they're gone. Once you regain control of your character, there's an abomination on the left-hand side here. Smash him straight in the head. Um, we've only got a couple more things left to do in this area now. Again, more will have spawned, so, you know, be on your guard. Take your time. No need to rush. I mean, the checkpoints are pretty decent in this game anyway, so even if you do die, you don't get put, put back that far. So head down slowly. There's going to be an abomination which comes out with the first shed. Remember the first shed we went to in Chapter 2? There he is, straight there, and then turn directly to your left to kill the other guy. Job done. Now you can just sprint towards the end and give the first aid kit to this guy right here. Shit. I must. I'll help you. Here, take it. So now you get the achievement then for saving Roy Mitchell's his name, big old Roy. Well, small. Dying Roy, but same difference. Abomination right here then. And I actually go, don't follow me at this point. You're supposed to go left there towards the gate. I, I went the wrong way, so my bad on that. Yeah. And at this point, I'm like, what the hell am I doing? Ah, oh yeah, okay, here we go then. So now, now I finally figure it out. Now my um, blonde moment's over, even though I'm not blonde. Now we can continue the real way. 
So it's after you save Roy, instead of going right where I went, go to the left and up towards this oh, gate. Yeah. Sorry, dead guy, gotta move you. Apologies, but you're dead, so it makes no difference, really, does it? Shoot this guy. And now all we've got to do from this point is get to the whaling station. Now, some people just sprint there and it works for them. I found a bit of running and a bit of stealth to be the best bet on this point. So that guy's dead there. You won't have to worry about him. What I do is shoot this first guy. I met. There you go. Shoot the first guy and now we can just take... It's probably best to take your time. I found anyway. So, yeah, sort of stick with the right hand side, right hand wall. There is an abomination walking around somewhere. He's just down there. One guy will drop here, but run at this point because he is alive and he will chase you and eat you as you do. Duck down at this point. And we are basically there now. No, None of them can hurt you, so you are now good to go. Congratulations, we've only got two chapters left after this. On to chapter 13 then, we've got two chapters left to go, and in this area we've got just a few little things to collect, uh, another couple of achievements to grab, including the one of the diaries of the pastor's wife that we've been getting. So first of all then, head straight down to the end here, just climb down the ladder. Like I said, from, really from sort of chapter 10 after the second shambled boss fight, it gets a lot easier it hasn't been too difficult it's been rather enjoyable hasn't it um <laughs> pick up the hook on a rope here we're going to need that, Use that to later on and head towards the back of the factory in the right hand door we'll go into first and in the desk filing oh, the desk i keep calling it a desk filing cabinet it's just a regular filing cabinet this is where you'll find the last diary of the pastor's wife and now this is where your achievement will unlock if, of course, like I said, you got the one that I missed out on in Chapter 6. So hopefully you picked up the one in Chapter 6 that I missed Looks out. Looks like a page And this, this is where you'll get the achievement. Pick up that hidden note right there then, which is just to the right of the door, next to a couple of books, as you can see, because you're not blind. Um, and then I think that's pretty much everything in this room. And obviously the achievement for me didn't unlock here, so... I was sort of wandering around for about 10 minutes, wondering what the hell was going on. But hopefully you guys and gals have had it perfectly done now, and you've got the achievement now. So head on into the next room then. Um, I, for some reason, got lost here. I, didn't a, I think I was still a bit disorientated from that diary of the pastor's wife. <laughs> so head into the left side of this room then, and what we'll be grabbing is in the desk filing oh, the filing cabinet. Why the hell do I keep calling it a desk filing cabinet? I got no idea. It's no different. A filing cabinet is a filing cabinet all over the world. <laughs> but anyway, at the top of that regular filing cabinet, we find a diary key, and on the tall bookcase directly behind, we find a page which you can pick up. Right then, so now that I'm a little bit less confused, we can finally leave that room, head on to the right and climb up this ladder here. We'll be going up to the office at the top of this, and up to the next ladder then. Turn around and we can use the office key. Now, the achievement for finding 20 hidden items unlocked for me earlier, but others have reported it unlocking it in this particular room. So pick up the knife first, which is on the desk. Turn around, you can use the wheel, that will bring the cylinder over to the other side, which we will need, so that's a good start. And then directly to the right of that, just on the floor, you need a bit of light, but you will find another hidden item right here. And like I said, this is the point where the achievement will unlock if you haven't got it already, so don't worry if you didn't unlock it earlier. Use the office key again to exit out the T other way, and head towards that cylinder, now that we've got a knife, and the hook and the rope so what we'll be doing first then is attaching the hook and the rope go back to the room try to turn the wheel 
and then return to this bit, cut that bit with the knife, and then that will let us get into the new area. There we go, perfectly executed, well done. We are getting there now. So that's another achievement unlocked, the beast in the cave. Now we can head on through to the next area. And this is where things start getting a little, a little bit slightly Cthulhu-y, slightly Kraken-y, slightly Leviathan-y. And <laughs> that's him. That's Leviathan looking all disgusting as we are. So head towards Sarah then. And now we're going to enter this like sort of dream-like sequence. And all you got to do is just answer the phone directly in front of you and then go and answer the door. Just walk up towards the door. Easy enough. Hello. Who's there? So now we're in like another office. So turn directly around and then you'll see this chest here. This is an investigation no pick lock that you can fail, but with the maxed out investigation, you should be fine. I, again, unlocked it. All three playthroughs didn't have a problem, and that will unlock you another achievement. Belonging to the captain of the sewer. So you can have a look around if you want, but there's nothing of any interest in there for us now. We are good to go, so move out, head towards this lock gate. Again, this is one that you should be able to bypass with no issues at all. Pretty sure it's just part of the story, so happy, easy days. Now we can head towards Sarah again, who is... So now we can head towards Sarah, who is basically just mind-effing with us, to be honest. And now we're going to enter into this yet another dreamlike sequence. So go ahead, talk to Dr. Bellendhead right here. Now these next few choices are important. Make sure to re refuse, completely refuse the medicine. And there will be another two options to get, which you will refuse the meat and refuse the gun. So just refuse everything. You'll end up... It'll basically force you to do it anyway, but for, for the specificness and for the purposeness of getting these particular endings, etc., you need to refuse everything. Let me take a sample from you. Flesh? Blood? Don't fear. I created the mythological eye core from Leviathan's flesh. Who knows what I can make with you? I need a body for my research. I, I killed him. A necessary sacrifice that proves your determination. the truth and be free so yeah Pierce's mind's starting to go a little bit and now we enter into this sort of corridor with a whole bunch of doors now the correct door is the, the, you'll see two doors once you go through this one right here and the correct one is the one on the right turn around go to the door on the right and that will enter us into this sort of we've got sort of two puzzles to do in this yet another dreamlike sequence so what we'll do first then is head to the one directly in front of us right here which is to the right of where that sort of furnace is go around the wood go around the sort of path the wooden path right here now this is a specific go on to the third row of boards here take a right take another right sharp left and that will get us to the end of here because if you choose any other way you will fall and die You've got to make sure to turn the specific valve as well. If you just do any one, it won't work. So it's the one directly on the left. And you can tell it's done because obviously we'll get a game saved and we have a new path to go back to where we started.
So if you turn right then, head towards this next puzzle again. This is, they're both very, very simple. You've got to go this way, duck under this pipe right here. And you don't have to do anything. You've just got to turn again the specific valve. There's four to do, and it's the third one which you need to turn. And now what's coming up is we've got to go back to the furnace, turn the lever, and then we've got to escape the building as it is basically gets destroyed around us so i won't talk through that because you don't want to hear my annoying ass voice when you're trying to concentrate but it's not actually too bad this sort of there's only one path you can take obviously you'll try and go one way burning bits of debris will fall down it's pretty obvious where you've got to go though So that was it, hopefully you made it through that sequence without a scratch, which would always be nice if you could do it first time, because I kept, <laughs> I died very stupidly a couple of times, but now, we are on to the last chapter, get in there, see it's not too bad is it, quite an enjoyable game. <laughs> so Pierce is happy, he's almost dead basically at this point, but... At least the voice has gone, eh? So it's, uh, you know, it's a sort of win-lose situation, that. You're almost dead, but the voices are gone, so it depends which you'd rather. So, uh, take a direct left here. and Because I was uh, wandering around for ages. It's uh, <laughs> quite tricky to find the first time. I missed that. But... There's not a lot to do, it's just a, basically a lot of walking. We're going to still get a couple of achievements, and we're going to get another relaying option with uh, Dr. Colden. Uh, I mean, spoilers, not Dr. Colden. Stand up, walk. Is somebody there? Hey, who are you? Uh, where am I? So once you can regain control of Mr. Pierce, head towards the left through this little gap right here is a mural and this is where we will unlock the shadow out of time achievement and that's for discovering all murals now what you need to do is just turn around head down the steps you can have a look at that sort of um, stone there and see what's on it but again it's, it's not particularly important and just go ahead and take a look at the painting which will enter a cutscene and now we will be talking to Whoa, spoiler, Dr. Colden. Make sure to choose the relaying option right here, though. Even though she's got another... I think she's got another one, anyway. Yeah. So just keep choosing the relaying options just in case, if you want. This painting... Um... No. What? I must take... Sarah. I feel her call... No. 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 No one can fight their fate. What happened to me? Sarah. She is the Oracle. She will know what to do. Now that achievement you've just unlocked, that isn't the one to do with relay and options. That one is just a story related one in case you were wondering. But now it's literally just keep on walking, keep on walking. Pierce seems to be regaining his composure a bit now. See? You talk to a cute woman, you regain your composure. That's just how it works, okay? It's just how life goes. 
I didn't make the rules. <laughs> Dem's just them rules. Obviously, please don't think I'm being a perv on a uh, game video character here. That's just not my style. And good God, I bet you can't wait till we finish this game now. Uh, <laughs> anyway, this next path is... We're basically now coming towards the end of the game. But this is a long and quite linear path. So probably the most boring part of the game, sadly. But until, until we get to the end anyway. So keep on walking. A couple of sort of cutscenes will happen. Um... Yeah, not a lot to it. I could tell you a joke, but you've probably had enough of my voice anyway at this point, so I'll just leave you a crack on until we get to the end. None of this makes sense. Go. She is waiting. What have they done to me? Come on. Ah, uh, Mr. Pierce. I was expecting you. Fuller. You died in front of my eyes. Don't jump to conclusions. Is there not the tiniest spark of a scientific mind inside of that detective skull of yours? What abject substance did you use to turn her into an empty shell? Abject substance? The serum extracted from Leviathan's oil bestows the power of life. To me, my body is nothing but the mortal vessel of my conscience. To you, it contains more answers and secrets than your insignificant mind can grasp. Ah, screw it, one joke. Why did the old man fall in the well? Because he couldn't see that well. Huh? Huh? Eh, yeah. well. That's probably gone down like a lead balloon. Here you are. You never give up. That is not you. Not anymore. Not since your disappearance on the docks. Ah, detective. So easy to fool you. So eager to rush to the rescue of a woman in distress. You won't make me regret having tried to save people. I did what I could. Even for Colden. Your efforts to change your destiny, although in vain, make you worthy of the fate that is yours. The day has come. You will be asked to choose. Okay, then try this one on for size. What's E.T. short for? Because he only has tiny legs. Ah, ha, ha. Ah, ha. Oh uh, yeah, anyway, that's it. Okay, no more. My bad. <laughs> you took everything from me. Wife. Life. Destiny. You forsook your right to a normal life. The moment you chose power over humanity. No one wants to see such an unbearable sight. slightest idea of what you speak, of what I've been through. I have sacrificed my life to the one who sleeps. My marriage, my family, my own flesh. Why didn't Sarah choose me? Why is it your damn face on her painting? But you already... <laughs> you're... Quit lying. Trust your guts. If nothing... I'm a... Don't... No, no more now. Now we're getting into the real serious stuff. So, you know, <clears throat> composure, you know. Ooh. Right, what's going to happen at the end? What's going to happen at the end of this top? No more funny now. Serious stuff, okay? I'm almost there.
so we finally made it to the end of the game now we can really see Sarah Hawkins for what she is now she will have another relaying option which you can choose which should be the last one hopefully the game's updated itself so it actually unlocks for you here but again if not do not worry because we'll be getting that in the second playthrough along with the other two endings anyway but always choose the relaying option just in case I have seen the will be a truth I feel because it Pierce, help me. now after the cutscene it's as simple as just choosing one of the endings but of course remember which ending you chose so once we get back into this point you can choose the other ending and get that specific ending as well now I am actually leaving the endings of the game in here because they're pretty cool they're pretty cool Thank you. 
So it should be at this point you will unlock your first ending achievement for invoking Cthulhu and, like I said, hopefully the Fluent in Rulean achievement unlocks for you as well. But again, we'll get it in playthrough 2 if it doesn't, so do not worry about it. So what we'll need to do then is go, basically just go back into the game, do exactly what you did. But of course, just choose the other ending, which is successfully carrying out the counter ritual. And you'll start from just before where you hit the cultists anyway, so you should now be good to go. But anyway, thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. You know, I enjoyed this game. I thought it was brilliant. I hope you enjoy it as well. I know it can be a bit um, pricey for what it is, but, you know, the game's good. It's short enough, so it's not too bad when we do the second playthrough. And, again, I found the story very interesting. Really enjoyed playing it. Although, for me, three times is probably enough, to be honest. Um, but yeah, again, thanks so much for watching, guys and gals. Thanks to everyone who supported me up to this point, who watches all my videos. All the likes, comments, subscribers. You're all absolutely bloody fantastic, and I love you all. So yeah, and in that case, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Double the dosage as you asked us to, Doctor. Good, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>